Hello everybody, my name is Bash Harry and this is the Harry Knit and I've got my informal untitled latte because today is a long day, I've got work later and I'm obviously filming this video so I need extra caffeine. <laughs> I want to talk about 12 ways we can knit on a budget. Well, knit, craft, crochet on a budget really because this is a very holistic video on how you can, you know, save your money and knit or crochet or craft on a budget. We have this idea, this assumption that knitting is an expensive hobby, which might be true, but it doesn't have to be. Like all hobbies, knitting has ranges. And so I wanted to share with you guys some tips and tricks on how you could save your money and still have yarn left to spare. Lisa's Knit Club made a fantastic video on how to knit and crochet on a budget. I'll leave it down below. So I might have a few tips that overlap, but I hope a lot of these tips don't. So stick around, please keep watching. And of course, if you think there are more tips that I'm missing out on, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. I'm sure I'm missing something as I usually do. So with that said, Let's get started on 12 ways to knit on a budget. So the first one here that I have, which I'm sure a lot of people do, or they might not know in fact, is to become a test knitter. Test knitting is probably one of the ways that I save money on patterns and help out the knitting community. Being a test knitter, you have to apply for a test knit or a test call out. And then if you are selected, you will be knitting up that garment, that project for that specific pattern designer. I have been a test knitter for a few months now, I think since November, December of last year. I'm currently knitting up three projects and so far all the pieces that I've made this year, apart from some free patterns here and there, have been as a test knitter. And I absolutely love it because one, it's a nice free pattern that I can give feedback on to the designer. And two, it's also a great way to help out the knitting community and, you know, try your hand at new doing new techniques or things that you might not have done, um, which is fantastic. You can become a test knitter if you go on to Instagram or even YouTube. They usually do call outs for test knits that you can apply for. Uh, there's I've gotten selected for some, I did not get a few of them, so keep that in mind. You might have to apply for one or two or three and might not even get it, but that is okay. It's basically a numbers game. A lot of designers do test knitting and it is also a great way to help out the community, as I said. I've test knitted for more experienced designers and for one time or designers who's it's their first pattern ever. So it's a great way to kind of gauge knitting patterns. Obviously every designer is different. So, you know, you have to keep that in mind. A con I would say if you want to save money and become a test knitter is that it can be a little bit worrying to work at a deadline. Admittedly, um, sometimes it gives you three weeks, four weeks, sometimes six weeks. Sometimes you might not have the yarn that's right for it. So just keep that in mind if you want to become a test knitter. That being said, I think the whole idea of test knitting and becoming a test knitter can be a whole video all on its own. So let me know if you want a video about that. The second thing I want to talk about is looking for free projects. There are so many amazing projects that are free on Ravelry that you can make on a dime. There are so many amazing free projects on Ravelry that I have used since I was basically a kid who was just starting out with knitting. One of the projects that I'm currently doing using a free pattern is the My Favorite Socks. Uh, that is a free pattern. I'm not really a sock knitter, so doing that pattern first and trying out like a free vanilla sock pattern is a great way to start before going into the bigger, more intricate designs. So always look for free patterns and I'm sure there'll be so many up on Ravelry. I already have a video out about 15 free patterns for beginners, so please do check that out if you're curious. I'm sure that there are more free patterns available online though. A uh, part of me always believes that you should pay your creatives, your designers, but the ones who do provide free patterns are 
absolute beautiful amazing generous designers i'm serious they are amazing they're the backbone of the knitting community so please do check out some free patterns up online my third tip is to work with what you have so look at your yarn stash look at what you have and what you really could work with i know that i personally have a tendency of buying the pattern first and then buying the yarn and then i have just an overflow of yarn that i still have in my stash that i have not used yet so for me if i am thinking of saving my money and not buying any more yarn i go through ravelry and i use their advanced search feature it is so great to use if you want to check out designs with the specific gauge with the specific yarn the specific material so it is a great way to use up your projects you can also go to your yarn page i know that there's one on ravelry and then you can also check out what other people have done with that specific yarn or anything that's similar so work with what you have. It doesn't just apply to yarn though, it also applies to your knitting needles. What needles do you have right now that you can use to make the specific garment or the specific accessory home decor that you're interested in making? You don't need to have a whole set of knitting needles just to make a good pattern. It all depends with what you have and what you want to work with. The fourth thing that I put in here is looking at charity shops, thrift stores, or your local yarn stores. So we don't have a lot of charity shops or thrift shops here in Brunei. We have them, but they're specifically for clothing. But if you do look at charity shops or thrift shops, I'm sure you can find some yarn there that people give away, especially if you're from Europe or the US or the UK. I remember when I was in the UK, there was a lot of yarn that was donated from years ago from people. And so it is a great way to find a high quality yarn for yourself. As for your local yarn store, a lot of them also sell great yarn. So for me, we have two local yarn stores, craft stores, and one of them sells very expensive King Cole yarn and the other sells yarn that is a bit cheap, but unbranded. So for example, I have used their mohair to make some tops and that yarn, that mohair, I think only cost like $2.50 Brunei, which was about, I'm bad at math, but I'm thinking that's about 90 pence or like a pound at most. Uh, the conversion rate in my brain is confused, but it's relatively cheap. So don't be afraid of working with unbranded yarn from your local yarn store if that is an option for you. The fifth thing I would recommend that I haven't done yet, but I'm planning on doing, is recycling yarn from old sweaters. So I'm sure in our closet there is a sweater or a top that we haven't used that is made out of really, really good yarn. I have one that I got from a thrift shop for like four or five pounds three years ago, and while I absolutely love it, I also know that yarn could be used for another garment in the future. I might make a full video on how I'm like remaking that sweater, but that is an option for you if you're interested. So look around thrift shops for sweaters if that's an option for you, but I highly recommend going for a much thicker yarn that you can repurpose. The sixth thing that I would like to recommend is to actually start working with acrylics. Acrylic is not that bad, especially if you're trying to save and you are working on a budget. Acrylic has a lot of good properties. So for example, it does keep you warm and too, it is very, very cheap. Not all acrylics are made the same, just like how all wool or cotton is made the same. So be mindful of that. A yarn, an acrylic that I would actually recommend would be Caron Simply Soft. It is 100% premium acrylic and it feels so nice on the skin. I have made many pieces using that yarn, so I would highly recommend it. I've also used the James C. Brett um, yarn to make a sweater. It's very, very warm. Would be great if you're out in the winter times, but not in this weather. The seventh thing I would recommend, and this is great if you have like knitting crochet friends along with you, is a yarn swap. So another person's trash can be your treasure. So take for example, if there is a yarn in your stash that you might not be using and your friend has another yarn that they might not be using, 
feel free to just ask around and swap. I'm sure that is something that they want to remove out of their stash and maybe get something new. Yarn swaps are especially great if you do have knitter crochet friends, especially in your area. I have a few friends here in Brunei, but a lot of them are in the US and the UK and Europe, so unfortunately we can't really do a yarn swap. But this is definitely an option for you, especially if you're in a knitting community in your specific area. On top of that, I would highly recommend going on Ravelry and going to somebody's yarn stash area. This video is just me saying how great Ravelry is to look for yarns and how to use their features, but I'm serious. Looking at the Ravelry yarn stash is really great. You get to find people specifically who are willing to swap or sell the yarn that they might have, and some of them come at a very reduced price. This is especially popular for people in Europe, the UK, and the US, so if you're interested, please do check out their Ravelry yarn stash. The ninth thing I would recommend, and this definitely has saved me money too, is to sign up for newsletters and discount codes. So you can go and sign up for anyone's newsletter. For example, Jessie Mae Designs has a newsletter, and if you're signed up, you get to have a pay what you want method. So you could purchase her designs for at least full price, 20% off or 50% off, depending on which code you use and for your financial accessibility. I use her designs quite a lot. I'm wearing one of her designs. This is the Ripple top worsted that I made like two years ago. And her designs are so amazing. And you can get a pay what you want method by signing up for her newsletter. I know many other designers who do 20% off if you sign up for their newsletter. All you gotta do is check it out. You should also be aware of discount codes. So places like Wool Warehouse, which I shop for almost exclusively online, has a code that they use and you can get up to 10 to 15% off depending on the code that you use. Number 10, and this doesn't really apply to everyone, but it is an option, and that is to sell your own knitwear. Some people sell their patterns, their designs, other people sell their products. So for example, I don't usually sell garments, they're a bit expensive for the average person, but I do make hats and scrunchies and baby items for people in my country if they ask for it at a commission, and that saves me a little bit of money to shop and buy more yarn. <laughs> it is definitely an option though, not everyone wants to sell their knitwear, um, I know people who are very selfish knitters, and that is completely fine. You don't really want to overextend yourself with your hobby, and this is something that you should enjoy for yourself and to help you feel mentally well. Does that make sense? I hope so. The 11th thing I would like to recommend is to purchase end of year sales. Usually a lot of places will do seasonal sales depending if they want to finish up their stock. So for example, Drops back in February had a 30% off sale for a lot of their yarn, including Saffron, um, Soft Tweed, and Paris, if I believe, and Belle. And those are were at a huge discount of 30%. And obviously I saved a lot of money purchasing their yarn at a discounted price, so I would highly recommend purchasing end of year sales. Purchase your wool during the summer, purchasing your cotton and your linen during the winter is always great. For me personally, as I said, I live in a pretty hot climate, so anytime I can purchase cotton or linen, especially during the winter times, uh, is a lifesaver for me. And I'm sure that during the summer, a lot of places want to sell out their stock in wool. So, you know, purchasing during those times is always really great too. And the last tip, which I think all of us can do a bit more, calling myself out, uh, and that is to knit more mindfully. I think, especially on Instagram, we have this sort of idea that we always have to knit, we always constantly have to be making new patterns, all these whips, all these things, but that's not true. We can always make what we want and make what we love. And so sometimes that does mean sitting down and just focusing on one project instead of going about buying this pattern to, and then buying this yarn to make this specific project at that specific time. So. It is very important for us as knitters to be more mindful of what we make and in that way we save a lot of money and a lot of time instead of worrying about what's our next project going to be. 
I feel like that is something that I still have to work on. But that is a great tip, I would like to think. That is all from me. If there are any tips that I might have missed, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you got through the end of this video, maybe comment. What word should you comment? Bamboo. If you got to the end of this video, why not you comment bamboo and then I will know that you watched till the end of this video and that'd be so cool. Anyway, that is it from me. I've got work in a bit, so I shall see you later. My name is Bash Harry. This is the Harry Knit and I will see you later, as I said. Bye! <laughs>